Coming to the stage are two soon-to-be alumni of CSBSJU, Anna Krohn and Ma Megan Towell, our documentary filmmakers and co-directors of Extending the Link, a student-run organization committed to igniting social change in our community. They recently traveled to Rwanda to interview farmers um, and combine that footage with interviews uh, with local Minnesota farmers to look at uh, into the world of Minnesota uh, uh, into the world of women in agriculture. Um, now you might think that these two, when they get up on stage, that they might look like a great president and vice president <laughs> ticket, but these two are a foreign policy nightmare. Okay. <laughs> Besides the fact that uh, while in Honduras, Anna, Anna once crashed a rented moped and tried to fix it with super glue, she also snuck onto a yacht in Belize. And Megan, not to be outdone. Uh, talked her way onto a yacht in the south of France, only to discover that that yacht belonged to Vladimir Putin. <laughs> so if you drove your yacht here today, I would like have a look around before you drive home. Please welcome Anna Kron and Megan Towell. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Dad. Okay, so last summer, we decided that we were gonna film a documentary about women in agriculture in Rwanda. I was a little nervous to tell my parents at first. My mom handled it well. She applauded us on our courage. She made us promise that we'd bring along some strong boys just in case of an emergency. My dad was a little more curious about the logistics. How are you gonna get there? Do planes even fly to Rwanda? Our friends were along the same lines. Oh yeah, like Hotel Rwanda. Don't you know that there's a genocide going on? Or my personal favorite, is ISIS in Rwanda? <laughs> you know, I'd like to say that my initial perceptions of Rwanda were far ahead those of my friends and family, but to be honest, they really weren't. But over the next nine months, my world was about to be rocked in a big way. Belgians colonized Rwanda by dividing a previously united society of people who spoke the same language and had the same religion into two major ethnic groups, known as the Tutsis and the Hutus. The Hutus made up the majority of the country. They were shorter in stance and had flat noses, while the Tutsis were taller in stance and had straight noses. Over the years, ethnic tensions brewed between these two ethnic groups as they fought over who would take political control of the country. In 1994, extremist Hutus began slaughtering the minority Tutsis. And that is what began the Rwandan genocide, where over a million people died. During the genocide, six men, women, and children were murdered every minute of every hour of every day, effectively eliminating 20% of the total population. Furthermore, 500,000 women were systematically raped by many, many times HIV-positive men, not only ripping apart the fabric of society, but infecting an entire future generation. Rwanda is a country with a tragic history. Over 18 days spent in the country allowed for us to hear the stories of inspiring souls, transforming our team's minds of a tragic past into their hopes for the future. It allowed for them to teach us the new story they were writing, the positive story. After the genocide, the country was 70% women. Meet Florida. Florida is a farmer, a widow, and a patriot for her community. After the genocide, she responded by forming a women's farming cooperative so that her community could grow together. Florida was together with met thousands of women farmers. They united their communities through agriculture. Not only did this give them a way to nourish their families and provide an income, but the field served as a place for women to come, work together, laugh together, and heal together. Farming was all that they knew how to do before and after the war because girls were not encouraged to go to school at the rates that boys were. When the women in the cooperative joined together with Florida, they were allowed to afford the health care for their families. They were allowed to pay for the education fees for their children. Now making up the majority of the, of the country, women like Florida were pushed into leadership positions at the community, district, and national levels. Today, Rwanda is the global leader for women's involvement in government. 64% of the Rwandan parliament is made of women. To put this into, into perspective, 17% of the U.S. Congress is made of women. As we were reminded of very often by strong women leaders in Rwanda, we have a lot of work to do. 
There are three main reasons the Rwandan government is working to enhance the rights for women. Number one, women make up the majority of the population in Rwanda. Number two, Rwandans are co Rwandan women are considered the heart of their families in Rwandan culture. And third, according to the United Nations, women invest 90% of their income back into their family compared to only 35% for men. When you empower a woman, you empower a family. And when you empower a community, you empower a country. On one of our last days in Rwanda, we met a woman named Constance. Constance was a teacher before the genocide and became a leader in her community after the genocide. Constance had to use some serious ingenuity to figure out how, was she, how she was going to mend her fractured community. In Rwanda, a cow is a symbol of prosperity. Constance found a way to give one cow to a Tutsi woman and a Hutu woman. If the women successfully worked together, they could sell the milk from the cow and equally split the profits. This is one example of how these women were able to forgive despite all odds. Now I want everybody to close their eyes. Let's think of a time when someone did us wrong, when you had every reason to blame someone, when you withheld your forgiveness. Now I want you to think, WWCD, what would Constance do? While entrusting a cow into your care might not be the best solution, Constance would challenge you to forgive. And let's face it, if she could do it, you can too. When we allow for the power of forgiveness to empower us, and we move past those sentiments of hatred, anger, and hurt, we see each other's individual, unique skill sets and bring them to a community where we are, are there for the betterment of the whole. Collectively, we can do anything. Like the women in the cooperative, we can join together and prosper as one. Like Florida, we can become leaders in our community. And like Constance, we can use our innovation and ingenuity to bring unity. In Rwanda, we heard this common Africa proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. I think it's time that we slow down, we hold hands with our neighbors, and we reevaluate the way that we're going to move forward. As we sat on the plane coming home from Rwanda, about 20, 21 <laughs> hours together, <laughs> We joked about the questions our family and friends were going to ask us. Did you feel safe? Did you have access to clean water? Is the genocide still going on? Rwanda is so much more than a genocide, than stereotypes of starving babies. Rather than being worried about my access to Wi-Fi, I should have been worried <laughs> about that cute Rwandan boy we interviewed and whether or not I'd see him again. Or how about that government official who told me that if I was a woman interested in US politics, I better step up my game to be on the same level as a Rwandan woman. <laughs> Stop listening to TV and start listening to the real stories of the people around you that we share this world with. We, over the past nine months, <laughs> Megan and I have not only spent endless hours together, more so than apart, We've also lived across the hall from each other. And believe me, the power of forgiveness wouldn't <laughs> be here. We wouldn't be here without the power of forgiveness <laughs> and teamwork. So what we want you guys to know today and what we'd like you to leave this talk with is challenging yourself. Challenging yourself to let the past kind of go and learning from the mistakes and learning how to move together, forward, together. So with that, we would like to show the trailer to our documentary, A Boom Way, which means unity. We'll be premiering our full-length documentary next Thursday, April 14th at 7.30 at the S Stephen B. Humphrey Theater at St. John's. Thank you. <laughs> rero ya 94 ngo rero niho nageza aho ndavuga nti aho kugira ngo nizamure nje nyine kanchinge ishira hamwe yo kugira ngo nabandi bagore iteze I think it's important when you talk to people about gardening that you tell them all you need is a spade and a rake and a strong back And when you are in a little garden, you do what we all should do. 
you kneel before nature. And that's important. As a woman, I think because of the inequalities that we've grown up with, you are forced to work 10 times harder. I think that by working and having friendships and partnerships with other women in agriculture helps me feel like I have a place have those relationships for myself with other women in the community um, is a really important part of uh, my support network. So we try to, I think, use agriculture as kind of a realistic tool in the fight against malnutrition. Not necessarily as a silver bullet, but the fact that by um, teaching better nutrition practices that emphasize where people can buy food, how people can cook their food, that they can grow their food that um, the food they're growing can be part of the solution. We care about the environment. We care about pollution. We can seem overwhelmed by saying we can't make any difference, and I think that's totally erroneous.